Three Top Ways to Crush Procrastination Procrastination has prevented countless people from performing their best and achieving the most they can. Imagine how much more you could have done this year if you got back every single hour that you spent procrastinating. This is something many of us fall victim to, and it's something few people know how to overcome. Listen up then, and we'll take a look at some of the best ways to overcome procrastination. 1. Do the best task first. Tip number one is to work on a task that you enjoy and that isn't too daunting first. If you're about to start your working day and you have a large list of jobs to do, you may find it tricky to know which one to do the best. Starting with the easiest and most fun task actually makes a lot of sense. That's because this is the task you'll find it easiest to start. And once you've started, it becomes that much easier to carry on. 2. Leave something incomplete That last tip might have struck you as being at odds with the most typical advice. It might even feel like cheating. If so, you may find this next one even more surprising. Try leaving a job incomplete. In other words, if you're working today, then when you get to the last job of the night, Stop before you finish it completely. This goes against the typical urge to finish only when everything is done and we can tie a neat bow on it. But what this actually accomplishes is to make us feel a kind of anxiety when we begin work the next day. We hate leaving tasks unfinished and therefore you'll find that you feel a strong urge to leap straight into work when the day starts. It's surprisingly effective. 3. Practice Finally, you need to practice. That means practicing staying focused and diving straight into work when you really don't want to. Many people don't realize that this kind of discipline is something you can train just like a muscle. You might find you take 20 minutes to get started on average right now, but if you keep fighting the good fight and keep trying to force yourself to work better, then you will find that reduces to 10 minutes and less as time goes on. So even when you do get distracted, it isn't time wasted. 5 Top Motivation Tips You Can Learn From The Navy SEALs When it comes to the most motivated individuals in the world, Navy SEALs have to be right up there at the top. Just think about the intense discipline it must take to go through Hell Week. Five days and nights of training with just four hours of sleep total. So what can the rest of us learn from these superhumans? Here are five amazing tips. Eat the whole elephant. This rather odd phrase refers to approaching challenges by breaking them down into small parts. Rather than trying to survive the whole five days of Hell Week, a seal will focus on surviving each short evolution. Likewise, if you have a large job to do, try to break it into manageable chunks. Breathe. Navy SEALs are taught to take control of their nervous system through a process called arousal control. One of the main aspects of this involves using breath work in order to calm the heart rate and focus the mind. This is a highly effective strategy and one that everyone can benefit from. Visualization When facing a grueling challenge, a Navy SEAL will visualize what they need to do before they do it. This process can be useful for mental rehearsal as well as improving confidence and drive. The key is not to simply focus on the positive outcome, but also the actual process of getting there. Self-talk Navy SEALs use positive self-talk in order to encourage themselves when the going gets tough. This can help them to focus on the positive aspects of what they're doing and to remember why they're doing it. At the same time, they can use this as a way to build up their confidence and feel invincible. Try reminding yourself of the preparation and training you've done and of the victories you've won in the recent past. Get accustomed to hard work. Most of us live extremely comfortable lives, and we are thus not used to forcing ourselves to do things when things get hard. 
you need to change this pattern. Don't train or practice under perfect circumstances. Don't plan for perfect circumstances. Plan and prepare to need to complete your goals under the worst possible circumstances. Writing a book? Then practice writing with distractions. Be ready to write on days when you're extremely tired. Try writing ill. If you can do this, then nothing will stop you, just like a Navy SEAL. Do these three things for greater motivation. Struggling to summon the motivation and drive you need in order to get sh done? Finding yourself in a slump or a rut? In this presentation, we'll discuss three strategies you can use to gain motivation and drive and attack your goals. Make your bed every morning. This might sound strange, but making your bed every single morning without fail is something you can do to gain an instant increase in drive and motivation. How does this work? Firstly, when you make your bed, you'll make your environment tidier and cleaner. As a result, you'll find that it's that much easier to focus on the work you need to do without being distracted by your environment. At the same time, though, when you make your bed, you're forcing yourself to do something you probably don't want to do. This takes motivation and discipline. In other words, you're training your own ability to stay on task, which will in turn make it that much easier to do other things you need to do in the future. Create a motivation montage. All of us have scenes from movies, songs, quotes, and images that inspire us. These are things that somehow speak to us on a level that has a big impact on our emotions. What I'm going to suggest then is that you take these things and then edit them into an inspiring montage. Now, whenever you're feeling low on energy or motivation, whenever you're struggling to force yourself to do what needs to be done, you can refer to this compilation you've made and feel an immense sense of drive and motivation. Try yogic sleep. This is one that you likely won't have heard of, but it can be an immensely valuable tool in your arsenal. Essentially, we need to sleep in order to access our full motivation. Discipline and motivation take energy, and without sleep, you can't tap into that. If you're lacking sleep, then making yourself do important things will feel much harder. That's where yogic sleep comes in. This is a form of meditation that advocates claims can provide the same benefit as two hours of deep sleep in just 30 minutes. Whether this is true is up for debate, but it is certainly a powerful tool and one that you can use when you're low on recuperation. Give it a try and see what happens. How to build long-lasting motivation. There are countless tricks you can use to increase your motivation and discipline in the short term. These strategies work like a shot in the arm to jolt you awake and help you to stop procrastinating. But while these things might be useful hacks in the moment, they don't build lasting motivation and drive. There is only one thing that does. Passion. Think about someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's one of the most motivated and disciplined people in the world. He used this discipline to travel to America, become the most successful bodybuilder in the world, to become the highest paid actor in the world, to build a multi-million dollar business single-handedly, to learn English, to invest in properties, and to ultimately become governor of one of the biggest economies in the world. How? If you were to ask him, he would tell you that it all came down to having a clear vision and goal, to knowing exactly what he wanted to achieve in life. He said that every painful rep in the gym was worth it because it took him one step closer to winning Mr. Olympia. What do you feel that passionately about? Too many of us, on the other hand, will work toward goals when our hearts aren't really in them. How many people are writing books they have no interest in? Or are creating businesses that they aren't passionate about? 
How many are working jobs they hate? How many are getting into shape because they were told to by their doctors? When you do the things you think you're meant to do, then you struggle to summon real motivation and discipline. Conversely, when you work towards something you love, when there's something so exciting that it causes you to leap out of bed in the morning, then you will do anything it takes to complete those goals. You need a life purpose and a vision. The problem is that many people don't have that, and so they end up floundering in a directionless manner. It would be easy for me to tell you right now to just get a vision, but it's really not that simple. If you really want to find a passion, then my advice is to pick any project that interests you to start with. This might not be your life's purpose, but find a goal you're interested in and work on it. This will help to give you similar focus and structure, and it will help you to further explore what really does make you come alive. Everyone should be building something. How to create a morning ritual for great success in life. What you do in the morning has a huge impact on the rest of the day. This is a little like the appetizer that will set your mood and that will set the tone for the day to come. If your morning starts with you leaping out of bed late and then rushing out the door, chances are you're going to feel exhausted and stressed. If your day starts with you knocking it out of the park, you'll feel confident and on top of the world. Listen up, and we'll go over a few steps that should feature in any morning ritual. Wake up at least two hours before you need to. The first tip is to wake up at least two hours before you need to. Too often, we'll wake up as late as possible for the day ahead which accomplishes nothing other than to force us to rush out the door in a fluster. It's no surprise we end up looking scruffy and often forgetting important things that we need. Wake up two hours before you need to, and you can take it slow in order to really enjoy your day. Pendiculate Not heard the term? Pendiculation is what cats and dogs do when they wake up from sleep. It's a kind of stretch that involves contracting the muscles and then lengthening them. This helps to reconnect the body to the sensory motor cortex, thereby giving you back full control over your body. This is why animals don't need to stretch or warm up before going for a run, and it's highly invigorating. Work out. Nearly Every highly successful individual will tell you that they train and work out before they start their day. This is a valuable strategy for building immense energy and a sense of accomplishment. And of course, it will improve your health. Don't have time? Don't worry. Just five minutes of training is enough to have benefit and get the blood pumping. You can do your full workout later. Cold shower. Taking a cold shower will increase adrenaline and testosterone. It will help to wake you up via the mammalian splash reflex, and it will train your discipline and motivation. It's not pleasant, but that's kind of the point. Meditate. Just as many highly successful people say they train first thing in the morning, even more of them claim to meditate. You should too. How to get into a flow state and stay there. A flow state is a concept that has been discovered by psychologists and researchers and which has become almost mythical in status. For those not familiar with the term, a flow state is a state of total concentration and even euphoria. This occurs when we are so focused on a given task that we lose awareness of anything else going on. In the brain, this causes the prefrontal cortex to shut down and go quiet, while the parts of the brain responsible for focusing on our bodies and senses remains active. People achieve incredible things in this state, breaking athletic records, creating amazing works of art, and more. So how do you get there? The first and most important step is to ensure that the challenge level of what you're doing is just right. If something is too challenging such that you find it nearly impossible, 
you will find that you give up quickly and lose interest. But likewise, if it is too easy, then it will fail to stimulate you and you'll look for something more interesting too. The perfect task for achieving and staying in flow then is one that is difficult and engaging without being disheartening. What do you do if you're asked to do something dull and uninteresting? Simple. You find a way to make it interesting. One way you can often do this is simply to practice doing the very best job you can. Find a way to be faster, more efficient, more artistic. By doing this, you make the task much more engaging and therefore make it easier to stay in flow. Another important tip is to remove distractions. It's going to be hard to stay completely focused on a given task if you're hungry or tired, or if there's a loud noise coming from the room next door. A common and useful strategy is to put on noise-canceling headphones, play some loud music without lyrics, and focus on that. Finally, practice being in flow. Practice focusing on something as intently as possible while ignoring all distractions. A great way to do this is to try meditating, which essentially is a form of intense focus. Once you've mastered this, you'll be able to make your mind work for you. And when you do that, you can achieve nearly anything. How to keep motivated when you're in a slump Anyone can be productive and motivated when things are going well. When you're having a great day and you feel inspired, it can be very easy to set yourself down to work or to get outside and do a workout. The real challenge then is to remain productive when you don't feel good. How do you perform when you feel tired and miserable or when your motivation has left you? In this presentation, we'll discuss how to get your mojo back on those days and kick ass anyway. Prime yourself. When you feel in a slump, you might wonder what it is that's going wrong. Why can't you summon the motivation and energy to train anyway? The answer is that you have loss of inspiration. Inspiration is the instigator of motivation, and without inspiration, it is very hard indeed to feel motivated and driven. So what's the solution? One fantastic thing you can do is to try and win back a little motivation by priming your mood. Priming means that you're doing whatever you can to try and set yourself in the right state of mind, thus making the challenge that much easier. So for example, if you're trying to find the drive to work out, then a solution might be to watch some training motivation. How about the training montage from Rocky? Likewise, if you're trying to set yourself down for a day of work on a project, how about taking a look at an example of a project that you really admire? A perfect example of the kind of thing you want to achieve. Set rewards. Another tip is to set yourself rewards. That means that you create targets to meet, and then you reward yourself only when you achieve those things. For example, you might say that you'll make yourself a cup of tea once you've answered X number of emails, or once you've written Y number of words. This is instead of giving yourself the reward first, which just ends up taking time and setting you back. By using those things as rewards, you create a goal to work toward. Often, you'll end up putting off the reward for longer once you've begun being productive. Take a break. You know what, though? If you really feel exhausted, then it might actually be better to just give yourself the break. No one can be productive and driven all of the time. How to power through sticking points in tasks. There is a point in any task, any goal, and any challenge where things suddenly get harder. Runners call this the wall. It's the point at which we run out of disposable energy. It is the point at which we become tired, but where there is still too long to go for us to feel like the end is in sight. It's this point where most of us give up and quit. So the question is, how do you prevent that from happening to you? How do you power through those sticking points? Here are some of the best strategies you can employ today.
break it down. One of the biggest mistakes people make when working toward a large goal is to focus too much on the end point. That is to say that they focus on where they want to be in a year's time from now. While this might be inspiring, it is ultimately too distant and far off to have much of an immediate emotional impact. What you therefore need to do instead is to focus on the short term. Focus on the smallest next step you need to do and don't worry about the end goal. Focus on the fact that you have 16 miles still to run during a marathon and you'll feel defeated. Focus on completing just the next mile and you'll feel a lot better. Try non-reactivity. Navy SEALs use something called non-reactivity in order to power through moments of intense challenge. Likewise, distance swimmers refer to something known as a swim coma. Both these terms describe the same thing, the moment when you zone out and stop thinking about the nature of the challenge or your situation. Instead, you are now focused purely on the here and now. You aren't engaging just silently executing the plan. This is tough to cultivate, but if you practice meditation, you may find you're able to reach this near meditative state more easily. Make it engaging. Another reason we often give up on tasks is that they become boring. This happens for many of us during work. The solution? Make it interesting. This is particularly useful for writers. Writer's block often comes from the fact that what you are writing is boring to you. If you can make it interesting, that will change. The Neuroscience of Motivation and Self-Discipline If you want to stay motivated and disciplined, then there are countless videos out there that will provide you with useless platitudes and hacks. These sound great on paper, but they rarely get the job done. If they did, then no one would struggle with lack of motivation or procrastination. Instead of looking for a quick fix then, the best advice is to think deeply about the nature of your motivation and focus. What is the neuroscience behind your ability or inability to stay on task? In this presentation, we're going to explore the answers to that question. The Neuroscience of Focus Motivation and focus largely comes down to a concept in psychology called attentional control, or executive attention. This refers to the conscious ability to redirect attention, which is handled by the executive control network in the brain. This is a network of brain regions that work together in order to help us stay focused. Specifically, the part of the network responsible for conscious control of attention is the part called the dorsal attention network. The ventral attention network, meanwhile, is the network of brain regions that react reflexively in order to redirect attention. That means responding to a loud noise or the sound of our name being called. Neurochemistry So how does the brain know which task to switch to and when it's going to do that? The answer is neurochemistry, the production of brain chemicals that mark certain activities in the brain as important. And in this context, the most important chemical is dopamine. Dopamine is the reward hormone that is produced when we work towards something that we think will be rewarding. Dopamine is released, for instance, when we eat something tasty or play a computer game. So what is it about computer games that causes the release of dopamine? It's actually linked with doing well, which in turn means we're learning. This is the key to motivation and focus. The brain wants to learn and keep growing. That's why we love play. Thus, doing well at something we find moderately challenging is a reward in itself. This is why it's so hard to stay fixed on a task that we find boring. This requires huge amounts of willpower to use the ventral system to stay engaged. Conversely, if you can turn what you're doing into a learning experience, then you will ensure your entire executive attention network is working in unison.
Why You Lack Motivation and Willpower There are countless books written about motivation and willpower. Some of these are fantastic at building your drive and commitment. Others aren't so useful. But really, the question we should be asking is why these are needed in the first place. Why do so many of us struggle with poor motivation to begin with? In this presentation, we're going to break it down and get to the bottom of this problem. Life is too comfortable. The first thing to recognize is that most of us have no real need to change our circumstances. We are sheltered, we are warm, and we are fed. As long as this continues to be the case, our biological drives are going to be happy keeping things just as they are. And they won't want to risk those things, even if they can help make us happier, wealthier, and healthier in the long term. In other words, your emotions are focused on your immediate psychological needs. They are focused on keeping you healthy and comfortable. The Hierarchy of Needs This can be explained by Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. This is a psychological theory that looks at the specific drives that each of us experience. This is often portrayed as a pyramid with the most basic and fundamental requirements food, water, shelter at the bottom and more aspirational and abstract concepts at the top social acceptance, actualization. The items at the top of this pyramid are the things that bring us true happiness and a sense of real accomplishment. But the items at the bottom are our evolutionary imperatives. This is what our body is hardwired to seek most of all. Remember, when we were evolving, we did not have the constant access to food and shelter that we have today. Your body is always going to tell you that it needs to be warm and comfortable, rather than working hard to get things done. So how do you overcome this juxtaposition between what you need to do and what your body thinks you need to do? The answer is first to train to go against those primitive desires. We can train willpower, just like we can train muscles. Get used to working out when it's cold, being productive when it's late, and taking cold showers. Then you can do anything. The other is to make sure that your basic needs are fundamentally met. If you're overtired, you won't be able to work at your very best.